Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Federal Republic of Nigeria at 50. And of course we're indicating that uh, this is the 51st celebration of the Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria. And we're also fortunate to have with us the ambassador to the United States uh, from uh, Nigeria, uh, Dr. Eddie, Eddie Fouye. And of course, Dr. Eddie Fouye will give us some information in reference to his background, his education, and some of his experiences during this first segment. And then after we have our first commercial break, we'll come back and talk about uh, the uh, great federal republic of Nigeria. And of course, Dr. Eddie Fouye, let us start off by having you to give us some information about, for the first six minutes, about your background, uh, your education, and some of your experiences that eventually led you to uh, the uh, chief representative of the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, to the United States of America. Well, thank you very much for having me. And uh, let me say how pleased I am to be here, uh, to be in Nashville. It's been a very quite stimulating experience. And talking about myself is something one finds a bit hard to do because one was brought up as a Christian and one has to acquire those virtues, demonstrate those virtues of humility, but one has a lot of reason to be grateful to God. Mm -hmm. I often describe myself as an academic diplomat. Um, my children met me as a university lecturer, and now they, they, they seen their dad transformed to becoming a diplomat. Mm -hmm. I started life as an academic. I haven't gone to the University of Baden, mm -hmm. I own Harvard. Mm -hmm. I got a BA degree in history, mm -hmm. and I went on to, uh, to Uganda and also to the UK to do a PhD on aspects of colonial history of Uganda, which is um, the way the British related to the Ugandan people. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. finishing that, I came back to the University of Lagos mm -hmm. and worked as a lecturer and climbed all the steps uh, mm -hmm. from lecturer two to lecturer one mm -hmm. to senior lecturer to associate professor mm -hmm. and then professor and head of department. Between all this was between 1973 to 1987. Mm -hmm. And then I became professor and head of history department. Then because my area of interest, academic interest, was on uh, diplomacy and international relations between Uganda and the British, and then I started to take interest in relations between Nigeria and many other countries, I was always commenting on diplomatic issues and international relations issues as they affect Nigeria. I think that was what made, it, made the federal government to decide to ask me to be part of a group of lecturers who are uh, uh, training new diplomats in areas of diplomatic history, international relations, international economics, into Africa relations. Uh, and I was part of those who are training newly recruited diplomats at a place we call the Foreign Service Academy in Lagos. I did that for two years, one year every two, well, one month every year for two. And the third year, after finishing the third year, I was asked to, to uh, kind of put in practice what I've been preaching to become ambassador mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, we call it high commissioner, mm -hmm. to Jamaica in the West Indies. Mm -hmm. But then we concurred accreditation to Belize and Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very good experience because uh, being in Jamaica and um, seeing people of African descent mm -hmm. in the West Indies, I thought it was necessary to use my experience as a historian mm -hmm. to reconnect them, them to, to their home, mm -hmm. homeland. And that's what I did most of that time. And it was very very, very good experience for four good years. Well, I was very well received by people of Jamaica and I enjoyed it. I think the kind of quality performance I got, I did there, influenced the government to send me to the United Kingdom as Deputy High Commissioner in charge of Nigeria's relations with many countries, uh, many international organizations, <coughs> the UN, the Commonwealth, and the European Union. And I, w I did that for about, <coughs> excuse me, for two years. And then before then, I then applied to the Commonwealth. Commonwealth is, is, uh, is a group of uh, former British colonies mm -hmm. who, who, who grouped themselves the together to extend uh, mutual cooperation to each other. Mm -hmm. I w first, I was Deputy Director of Strategic Planning, mm -hmm. and then I was later on appointed head of the Africa program for the mm -hmm. Commonwealth. I think I was in the Commonwealth between nine, for about a total of 12 years, and six of which I served as Special Advisor to Secretary General mm -hmm. and head of the Africa program. From then, I came to ECOWAS for, for two years, as ECOWAS is Nigeria's equivalent of your OAS here, mm -hmm. and then it's a regional organization. From then, I came, I, I served the two years as 
uh, as advisor to the president mm -hmm. on democracy and good governance. Mm -hmm. Very good. And of course, Dr. Adedjude, let, let's take this first commercial break and then we'll get back and we'll pick up at that same point. Yeah. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to the ambassador for the uh, Federal Republic of the West African nation, Nigeria. And he's given us some information in reference to his background, his education, and some of his experiences. And now we would like to, uh, uh, Dr. Adifuye, to uh, talk about uh, some other aspects of it, to talk specifically, since this is the uh, 51st anniversary of uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria to talk about, and as a scholar in a real sense in reference to colonialism and et cetera, and et cetera, uh, talk about some of the e events and some of the situations over the next eight minutes that eventually led you uh, to uh, independence. Well, now, Nigeria was a British colony. Uh, we were colonized by the British through a series of um, uh, wars and uh, military action, Nigeria became was the, 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 the two sides of Nigeria, the Northern Protectorate and the Southern Protectorate, was amalgamated in 1914 mm -hmm. to become the Protectorate of Nigeria. And then we had colonial rule, and you had um, the British conquered the country steadily, um, incrementally, and brought the whole country together under colonial rule. Mm -hmm. Colonial rule, as you all know, was a kind of designed, carefully designed exploitation of the resources of the colonies mm -hmm. to the advantage of metropolitan power. So we, colonial was such that um, it, it was for economic reasons. Tapa resources used to develop their country. And that's what happened with us. And um, we took part in the, in, in the First World War, the Second World War on the part of the British. And after the, the, sec, the, sec, the, the Second World War in 1945, the, the, the doctrine of self-determination came mm -hmm. up. And, they, 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 and we, the people started agitating for independence. And the, the agitation for independence was led by Nigerians who had been abroad to study mm -hmm. and who had, uh, who had been, been conversant with so, some of those principles. Mm -hmm. the Human Rights Declaration, uh, the, the Human Rights Charter. And they began, they began to question British rule over them because based on the logic and principles they have learned while studying abroad. So you find the returnees, and most of them, one of them, most famous of them was Dr. Namdi Azikwe, who was actually educated here, began to question British rule over Nigeria. And the agitation led on to cities of, uh, from many African countries asking for self-determination. More so as the UN, when it was conceived in 1940, uh, when it came up in 1947, began to advocate for self-determination. So people, Nigerians also, asked for self-determination. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many African countries began to achieve independence. 1957, Ghana was the first one. And then in 1960, Nigeria ultimately attained independence mm -hmm. from colonial rule. And, and the, the green, white, green flag of Nigeria was hoisted to replace the Union Jack. Mm -hmm. And then we became independent mm -hmm. as a nation mm -hmm. in 1960. So we, we became independent in 1960. And um, we, we, we operated a British system of government, a uh, Westminster model parliamentary democracy. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we went through quite a lot in the country. We went through the, the, we, we, the first set of, uh, our first set of post-independent rulers merely stepped into, into, 
shoots of the British. And uh, even though they meant well, mm -hmm. but the, the, all the, the defects of the British system was still very much around. Mm -hmm. And so we had a lot of, the, 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 the federal structure was not, was, not, was not properly arranged. And so we had a foreign policy that, for instance, I spoke of non-alignment, mm -hmm. but was really pro-Western. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the, our first set of politicians saw themselves as succeeded imperialists. Mm -hmm. And so administration was not in the best interest of the people. Mm -hmm. That led to agitation among the various political parties, leading to uh, the first overthrow of the civilian government, and then a civil war, which we fought 1967 to 70. And then, but by the end of the civil war, it was clear to everyone that Nigerians will have to live together as the same people. And so we, the civil war ended with General Yakub Gowon, who became head of state, saying that no victor, no vanquish, that, that nobody will ever question the territorial integrity of Nigeria. And we were, we were prepared to, to live together as one indivis, indivisible set of people. So since then, we be, and a lot of things happened after this. But during the Civil War, one good thing was that we, oil was discovered in commercial quantity. Mm -hmm. And Nigeria became an oil producing country. Right now, we're the fourth largest supplier of crude oil mm -hmm. to the United States. Mm -hmm. So we, we became, and then, then there was agitation for a change of the constitution. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of people believe that the Westminster model was not quite suitable. And that was why we had a military coup, we had constitutional problems and all that. <clears throat> and then we decided to adopt the American type Republican mm -hmm. constitution. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we are currently practicing mm -hmm. right now. And so we have, um, we have a Republican type constitution with a presidential system, mm -hmm. gov uh, governors in states, mm -hmm. president in the center, and um, uh, that's what we've been, I mean, that's not been, Without, I mean, that's what some, some of the political scientists, some of us say that it's not the system of government that matters, mm -hmm. it's the way it is administered. In spite of the change from the Westminster model to the Republican system, from the British system to the American system, we still had military coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. We had so many military coup d'etat, many military takeover of mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. uh, like we had, the, yeah, there was one in 75, there was one in 79, there was one in 83. And, but right now, people are tired of military rule. The, the, since the collapse of the Berlin Wall mm -hmm. and, the, and the end of communism mm -hmm. and the, the wave of democracy all over the world, mm -hmm. people are now beginning to question the rationale for military rule. Mm -hmm. So we've got to a system whereby democracy as a system of government has become established in the country. And we may, we may have our problems, but we will not allow any set of soldiers to come and take over, mm -hmm. and you, you, uh, take over anymore. And so, mm -hmm. democracy has come to stay. Mm -hmm. We are trying to perfect the American system to adopt it to our own a peculiar mm -hmm. situation and make good of it. And so we we now have a, a Republican type constitution mm -hmm. in Nigeria, and with um, by camera legislature, mm -hmm. the Senate, mm -hmm. the, at, at the federal level, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Uh, Congress just as here, mm -hmm. and we had a presidential system of government, a president and a vice president, and the governors in, in the, in the, uh, in the, um, in our, in our 36 states mm -hmm. with the federal capital territory. Mm -hmm. So we have a similar a system similar to that mm -hmm. of yours, but there are still problems, there are still challenges mm -hmm. in the way it is administered. Mm -hmm. So that's where we, we are right now. And, and, of and of course, I think we're getting ready for our first uh, commercial per, uh, break. And when we come back, Doctor, let's uh, see if we can have you to talk about your mission uh, to the uh, United States of America. Because okay. uh, 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 serving 150 million uh, people, yeah. you see, in the largest uh, state on the continent of Africa, it, it, it simply means that uh, 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 Nigeria is somebody in a real sense, in spite of all of the problems and et cetera. And you were sent here in a real sense to represent that. And so we're going to give you about 10 minutes uh, during this last segment to talk about uh, what you might consider to be your mission uh, here uh, in the uh, United States of America and uh, how uh, you found the response in reference to uh, some of the things that uh, you're, talk you're talking about. And that will be this first segment. And then we'll uh, have that second show and deal with some other aspects of it. But that's what we want you to talk about uh, Thank you. when this uh, next segment starts within the next 15 or 20 seconds. And then we'll be able to uh, pick up at that uh, particular point. And, let, and, and we'll be back with, with our audience following this very, very short commercial break.
Thank you, and welcome back to the uh, final segment of uh, this uh, section of uh, the show for the morning. And we're talking about the Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria. And this, of course, is part one of uh, that uh, report. And uh, we have with us the ambassador uh, from uh, the uh, state of Nigeria, who has given us some excellent information in reference to uh, the country itself. And now what we'd like to do is to talk about uh, his mission to the United States. And of course, Dr. Edgy, let's uh, see if we can have you to uh, talk about uh, your mission. Well, well, my mission to the United States is not different from that typical of ambassadors. Mm -hmm. An ambassador to a country is supposed to represent the interests of his own country in, in his country of accreditation. Mm -hmm. In my case, United States of America. And I'm supposed to, I'm expected to promote good relations mm -hmm between my country and the United States, uh, be it in areas of commerce, in areas of culture, in areas of diplomacy, and also to, uh, because we are a developing country and the U.S. is the uh, most powerful nation in the world, uh, most endowed, mm -hmm. um, to see the way in which I, I, sh I can relate to the United States government in a way to help achieve our developmental aspirations. Mm -hmm. uh, but to start with, there are quite a number of um, uh, the, the, I always say there's a commonality and a conviviality of interest mm -hmm. between Nigeria and the United States. Mm -hmm. First, the United States is the, is the country where you have the largest concentration of Nigerians outside Nigeria. Mm -hmm. and, um, we, and Nigeria as a country is of strategic interest to the United States. First, one out of, with a population of 150 million, mm -hmm. one out of every five Africans is in Nigeria. One out of every nine black persons in the world mm -hmm. is in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And Nigeria is the fourth largest supplier of crude oil mm -hmm. to the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we, there are in, in, in the United States, there are over one million of Americanized Nigeria. That is, people who are born in Nigeria mm -hmm. and have taken over the American, they've lived here enough, mm -hmm. uh, acquired American passports, and are contributing very positively to the economic development of the United States. So there is that community of interest. Mm -hmm. And I do know that uh, in the United States, the United States officials recognize the strategic importance of Nigeria mm -hmm. because with that kind of population, that kind of strategic importance, and the U.S. being the leading nation in the world, the only superpower, mm -hmm. America has taken it upon himself the, the task of ensuring there's peace and security in the world. Mm -hmm. If there has to be peace and security in the world, there has to be peace and security. Peace, there has to be peace and security in Africa, mm -hmm. and if there has to be peace and security in Africa, mm -hmm. that peace and security mm -hmm. must start yeah. from Nigeria. Yeah. That what the United States government has recognized, and do we also recognize? And that explains the the very good nature of relations that do exist mm -hmm. between Nigeria and the United States. That was started since when I came, and before I came, there were some problems, but. Um, now the United States government, with the advent of President Goodluck Jonathan, mm -hmm. they know that Nigeria, Nigeria now has purposeful leadership. Mm -hmm. A leadership that is responsive and responsible. Mm -hmm. A leadership that is willing and able. A leadership that is that's prepared to tackle the fundamental problems of the country mm -hmm. and create a Nigeria which will be of immense, uh, of immense usefulness mm -hmm. to the United States. So we, we enjoyed very good relations and my job has been to to cement that relationship with that do exist between Nigeria and the United States. Also, even in our strategic and foreign policy objectives, mm -hmm. there's a mutuality of interest. Mm -hmm. Nigeria and the US, we want a country, we want a world rather, a world that is free of nuclear proliferation, mm -hmm. a world that is free of terrorism, mm -hmm. and a world in which the principle of democracy, human rights, mm -hmm. rule of law mm -hmm. dominate, and a world in which, which features more of consultation, cooperation, as distinct from co mm -hmm. co confrontation. Mm -hmm. And that's why I purpose, and we work towards that. Nigeria, for instance, with the, with the actors of the US, we are, we are one of the largest contributor mm -hmm. of peacekeeping forces mm -hmm. to, to, oh, to mm -hmm. the United Nations. Mm -hmm. We, and we have, been, we have been very much in agreement with the US mm -hmm. on major policy issues in recent times. Mm -hmm. We were with them on the issue of uh, Iran nuclear non-proliferation mm -hmm. agreement. We were with them on the issue of, um, of, Li of uh, Libya, the issue of no-fly zone. Mm -hmm. So we have, we cooperate at the UN mm -hmm. to achieve similar global objectives of a world that is 
peaceful, secure, and ordered. Mm -hmm. And so that, and, uh, part of my objective is to promote that mm -hmm. and to promote the economic uh, development between the United States and, uh, and Nigeria. First, and there have been very concrete ways in which mm -hmm. we have made this possible. First, we have what we call, we have signed what we call, what is called a binational commission agreement with the United States of America. A binational commission agreement is the highest level of strategic cooperation that can exist between two countries. Mm -hmm. The Obama administration has signed that agreement only with the, Niger with the government of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And there are four major components mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. First one is, uh, we call it uh, uh, governance, uh, governance, transparency, and integrity, mm -hmm. called GTI. That has to do with gov uh, good governance, mm -hmm. uh, political correctness, and all that, democracy. Mm -hmm. And within that framework, mm -hmm. the United States government assisted Nigeria tremendously mm -hmm. when we conducted the last election, mm -hmm. which was internationally accepted as very free, free and credible. Mm -hmm. we, the second one is on Niger Delta and regional security. Mm -hmm. We have this problem in Niger Delta where a number of people took up arms. Uh, mm -hmm. Because they are, they, they, there was a lot of environment pollution in the oil producing areas, and we then uh, we then uh, we then designed an amnesty policy mm -hmm. to encourage those who have been fighting to surrender their arms. Mm -hmm. The amnesty policy involves retraining of these foreign militants mm -hmm. so, so that can be reintegrated into society. Mm -hmm. And many of the Nigerian Delta governments mm -hmm. have signed MOUs with American public and private sectors, mm -hmm. retraining them in America. Mm -hmm. They are all over the place. Mm -hmm. Then the, the regional security aspect involves, involves uh, our cooperation to ensure there's, there's a peace in the Gulf of Guinea coast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in addition, in furtherance of that, the American government transferred to Nigeria a, a, a big naval warship, USD Chase, mm -hmm. which we renamed USS Thunder. Mm -hmm. Thunder, of course, is the English equivalent of, of, of Aradu, mm -hmm. which is the word given to the Nigeria flagship mm -hmm. flag in the mm -hmm. area. I had the privilege of receiving that, that ship mm -hmm. from the U.S. Mm -hmm. Coast Guard in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And the ship has now set sail for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that ship is supposed to assist us in policing the Gulf of Guinea Coast. Mm -hmm. Most of the oil that was sent to the U.S. Mm -hmm. is from offshore. And with that kind of naval, naval ship, we'll be able to check the activity of smugglers and bunkers and all that in that area. The third component of the, of the Nigerian U.S. Binational Commission mm -hmm. is on, um, um, uh, we, uh, we, is, we call it energy and investment. Mm -hmm. Energy in the sense of oil and gas. Like I told you, we are the fourth largest supplier of crude oil to Nigeria. Many American companies are in Nigeria mm -hmm. dealing with oil. Mm -hmm. And they want to increase the quality, of our quality and quantity of our power generating supply. Mm -hmm. So many American companies are there helping us to increase the quantity and quality of our power supply. And the fourth one is, is on agriculture and food security. Mm -hmm. Agriculture it involves increasing the quantity of our food production mm -hmm. and also mechanizing and commercializing agriculture. Mm -hmm. On those, those four areas, we have a meeting. Mm -hmm. And that takes me to Nigeria back and forth. Back, mm -hmm. And then we, we, and it involves a steady mm -hmm. team of officials from Nigeria mm -hmm. to the US. Mm -hmm. We meet, sometimes we meet in Washington, Sometimes it means in Abuja. Mm -hmm. That agreement is due for a review. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, in January next year, mm -hmm. and we want to extend mm -hmm. its, its perimeters mm -hmm. to bring in more more issues mm -hmm. where we discuss it. Mm -hmm. So we have a focus and the formal mm -hmm. formal area for format for cooperation among us, mm -hmm. and those are the more major areas in which cooperate. And those four components contribute to the realization of our mm -hmm. national developmental objectives. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. being there for us is quite a good thing. And mm -hmm. my government is very grateful to the United States government mm -hmm. for their cooperation to us. Very good. With us and, actually, and of course, Dr. Adifurie, you know that uh, this is the end of that first segment, first show that we're going to do here. And okay. after which we'll come back and we'll talk about some other issues that we've already outlined for you. But we want to, uh, for the benefit of our audience and for the benefit of those who will see this uh, first show, we want to thank you for coming by and giving us that information. And, 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 and then... Uh, we will come back uh, again with another show. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break.
Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Federal Republic of Nigeria at, the, at 51 years of age. And of course we have with us to talk about the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Edi Adiju, Adifuye, Adifuye. Uh, and, 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 and of course Dr. Adifuye, let me apologize uh, for that uh, mix up there. Uh, <laughs> But uh, this is our second segment, uh, uh, second show that we're doing uh, yeah. with you, uh, Dr. Adifuji. And uh, what we'd like for you to do is to, uh, during this first segment, make some statements in reference to who you are and why you're here. Yeah. And then we'll almost meet, move immediately into uh, some of those other topics dealing with the uh, economic conditions in uh, Nigeria, uh, the uh, president, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, as well as uh, some of the uh, trade and r relationships that the United States has with uh, Nigeria. And finally, to uh, talk about uh, the Walmart uh, situation. I'm sure that all of our audience, uh, and especially all business everywhere, is concerned in reference to uh, that relationship. Let's talk about it from that perspective. Well, my name is Adi Adifuye, uh, Ambassador of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the United States of America. I started life as an academic and um, was a uh, professor and head of history department, mm -hmm. University of Lagos, mm -hmm. before I was um, asked to be ambassador of uh, High Commissioner for Nigeria mm -hmm. to Jamaica with concrete accreditation to Belize and Haiti. Mm -hmm. From there, I was moved to London as Deputy High Commissioner mm -hmm. in charge of international organizations. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I, I went to the Commonwealth Secretariat, mm -hmm. first as uh, Assistant Director of Strategic Planning, and later on as uh, uh, Director of the Africa Program for the Commonwealth mm -hmm. Secretariat. I did there for some six years before I became advisor to ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. ECOWAS, the equivalent our own OES. Mm -hmm. And from, the, from serving in ECOWAS for two years, I was then appointed to be ambassador of Nigeria to the United States of America. Mm -hmm. This is where I am. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm in Nashville to see Nigeria, the Nigerian community. Mm -hmm. As I do going to all the big cities mm -hmm. where there's a sizable element of mm -hmm. Nigerians, mm -hmm in the U.S. Why well, don't you make some statements about the Nigerian community uh, in Nashville? You've had an opportunity oh, oh. to uh, observe and yeah, deal with it. I, I've, I've, I've been to the, to the mayor. I saw the lieutenant governor yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was a president at the, uh, the personal parade mm -hmm. for the police mm -hmm. uh, here yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite impressed with the way the Nigerian community have been, have been, uh, have been, have been absorbed, mm -hmm. the way they have been received, mm -hmm. the way they, they have been assisted, the way they have been cooperative with the, with, the, with the people in, um, in, the, um, in, in the city. I was just coming from Fisk University, mm -hmm. and the students told me how much they're enjoying the place, mm -hmm. how much the authorities are very cooperative, mm -hmm. and giving them the conducive environment mm -hmm. to study. And they were all very happy with the, with the reception being accorded mm -hmm. them. That is my job, makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, try, I'm, 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 I'm thanking the authorities of Nashville mm -hmm. for doing that. Mm -hmm. Of course, they have all enjoyed so many other things. Mm -hmm. I, I like your, the, the gay, gay, land, gay Land Hotel, mm -hmm. it's first uh, class, mm -hmm. first class. And mm -hmm. I've been to quite a number of places which mm -hmm. I like. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful city, mm -hmm. and much more, more important, much more important to me, it means very friendly to Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Madu, the way it's been received everywhere, mm -hmm. gives mm -hmm. me joy. Mm -hmm. So. I really, I really enjoyed coming mm -hmm. to Nashville. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll be back again. Mm -hmm. If you were to mean Gaylord. You know, uh, uh, one of the things about uh, your nation is that uh, people would like to know more about uh, the uh, president, uh, of your, uh, your president. And, and so why don't you give us some information in reference to your president and people that are important in terms of the uh, government that you represent. See, we don't know that much about uh, the uh, president. presidency as well as uh, other things in reference to Nigeria. Dr. Gurok Jonathan, our current president, is generally believed to be the best president Nigeria would ever have. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm biased mm -hmm. because I'm an academic. Mm -hmm. This guy has a PhD in biology, mm -hmm. and by combination of circumstances and faith, mm -hmm. he seems to have been the best groomed person mm -hmm. to be president of Nigeria. He, from the university, became deputy governor of the state, mm -hmm. and uh, because the governor was removed, he became mm -hmm. uh, governor. From governor, he was nominated to be vice president. Mm -hmm. And the, when the president died, he stepped into mm -hmm. the shoes of the president. This is a man who kind of went through the meal, mm -hmm. observed all the problems, and because of his academic mm -hmm. background, he's able to design the appropriate solutions mm -hmm. to, to the government. We are very, very hopeful that under him, mm -hmm. Nigeria will get closer mm -hmm. to building a Nigeria of our dream. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's focused, responsible, mm -hmm. responsive, and what is more important, 
he was able to organize the, uh, the, the first credible, locally accepted, internationally accepted elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he finished that, after the elections, uh, he came up with a transformation agenda. Mm -hmm. And that transformation agenda is designed to take Nigeria to the next level mm -hmm. and designed to make, take us, make us take our place mm -hmm. as one of the 20 leading nations mm -hmm. by the year 2020. And he has appointed, what's more important? Let, let, let's uh, stop it for this first commercial break, okay. uh, Doctor. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this uh, very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the uh, second segment of the show for today. We're talking to the ambassador to the United States from the great state of Nigeria. And of course, he's given us some information not only about himself, but also about uh, Good Luck Jonathan, the president of uh, Nigeria, as well as some of the challenges and some of the successes. And of course, doctor, let's see if we can simply pick up uh, where you left off dealing with uh, the uh, president and then to move into <coughs> Uh, what you consider to be some of the challenges and the mission that deals with your mission, economic challenges, uh, trade, and et cetera. Well, like I was saying, um, Dr. Guglo Jonathan seems to be uh, the, the most qualified person ever to rule Nigeria. He, like he, an academic, he has a PhD in biology, mm -hmm. and having through uh, circumstances and faith, mm -hmm. he has served in government positions mm -hmm. <coughs> that seem to have prepared him adequately for this job. Uh, deputy governor, governor, vice president, president. He learned the ropes. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of focused. He's responsive, responsible. Mm -hmm. He was able to organize a very credible election. Mm -hmm. We kind of restored Nigeria's image mm -hmm. in the international mm -hmm. community. And after that election, he en en embarked on a transformation agenda mm -hmm. designed to improve living standards of the people, mm -hmm. designed to restore, remove some of the fundamental weaknesses mm -hmm. in our body politics, in our economy, and our society. Mm -hmm. He, 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 his transformation, economic transformation agenda focuses on him, uh, giving, uh, creating jobs mm -hmm. so that the restless youths mm -hmm. will be able to, to fit into mm -hmm. either the agriculture or the oil industry or mm -hmm. another industry and be able to raise living standards. And in doing that, he's been